continuing our discussion of analog to digital conversion, uh, let's go ahead and work an example here just to uh, so that you see an, an end to end example. Um, my pen's not behaving again. Hold on a second. Okay, so uh, this should be a straight line. It looks a little curved here, but let's say that we have an input voltage of zero to five volts. Okay, so we have a signal coming in. It's gonna be anywhere from zero to five volts. And uh, we're gonna use an eight to eight bit analog to digital conversion. Okay, which that means that, remember an eight bit two to the eighth is equal to 256. So our number coming out of the analog to digital converter is going to be between 0 and 255. Okay. So at 5 volts, I get out 255. And at 2.5 volts, I would get out 128, and so on and so forth. Okay, so what I need to do uh, when you when you look at documentation for um, analog to digital converters uh, especially in the controls market this is specifically in the controls market um, you're gonna see uh, reference to counts okay so what they're gonna say is you're gonna input the bolt voltage or you can input your voltage and then whatever you get out of it you're gonna get a number of counts okay so for this one, you would have, a, you know, if your count was 128, then you would know that you had two and a half volts. Um, if your count was 255, you would know you had five volts. So let's just look at our little, we know this is a linear type function. Uh, it's a completely linear function here. And so we've got our equation for a line, y equals mx plus b, right? So our y-intercept is zero, so really all we're looking at is y equal to mx, okay? And remember our, our slope of the line is our rise, is our rise over our run, okay? So y is gonna be equal to 250, it's gonna be equal to 256 divided by five times x. Okay, so let's just throw in 3.2 volts. Okay, so we want to see how many counts we get out for 3.2 volts. So y, the, our counts, is going to be equal to 256 over 5 times 3.2. So y is going to be equal to 163. Okay, so we would get out a digital value of 163 and that would approximate our 3.2 volts here. Okay. So if I were to go look in the computer uh, at the, the counts for that input, it would be 163. And if I want to get that back, of course, then I just have x is equal to 5 over 256 times y. Okay, so 5 over 256 times 163, x comes out to 3.18. So notice these don't match completely, right? And that's due to our quantization error. If I were to rework this example, I could re rework it with a 20-bit 20 20-bit 20 uh, um, analog to digital converter. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so in the course of a 20-bit, I've got zero to five volts and then y goes from 0 to 1,048,576, okay? So my steps in this are going to be little tiny steps, and so my value is going to end up being a lot closer, okay? And again, so 3.2 volts, what does that come out to be? What is, what is my count value? So again, my y is equal to mx, so y this time is equal to 1,048,576 over 5 times x. So my y equals 670,000, 
0, 88. Okay, so now if I go back and I take this number and I go back and I try and get back to my original number, now I've got x is equal to 5 over 1,048,576 times y. And so x comes back out to exactly 3.2 volts. Okay, so the uh, quantization error there is not as great. Um, and I'm getting out my original signal fairly closely. So there's a, a practical example or a real example that shows you quantization error in action there. Um, so uh, let's go on and talk a little bit about the instrumentation and how instrumentation might be wired to a computer system. Okay, so what's going to happen is I have I have an instrument of some sort. Okay, that's my instrument. And I have a wire and it goes into the input of my computer. Okay, so what does this look like? How am I how am I doing this? Am I am I varying this? Am I varying a voltage or how am I doing it? Well, a lot of times what you'll see in the industrial control system world is is what's called a current loop. And in the industrial control system world, you will always hear of 4 to 20 milliamp, okay? So you have 4 to 20 milliamp inputs coming in from the field. So you have your field device, you'll have your little computer card, you have a bunch of wires coming into it from all sorts of instruments out in the field and they're all doing 4 to 20 milliamp okay so what that means is is that when I'm digitizing this my zero is 4 milliamps my, my span is 20 milliamps and then that's going from zero to however many values like in my in my my 20 bit example you know 1 million 48,576. Okay, so why do they do this? Why not just do a, a voltage or, or something like that? Well, it turns out that um, if you do if you do a, a voltage, you're you're going to get more noise. If this uh, if this wire is going through a particularly noisy environment, you're going to pick up noise. Um, you're also going to have a, a small voltage drop across the wire, so your signal coming into the computer would vary based on how long this wire is. And of course, you don't want it to be dependent on the length of the wire, or you don't want to have to calibrate it to the length of the wire. So in all these cases, the current loop actually comes out to be a, a nice, a nice, uh, a nice uh, way to do this, okay? So the reason they do 4 milliamps to 20 milliamps is that as long as you're getting 4 milliamps, you know that this instrument is working out there even though it's reading zero. If we did say 0 to 16 milliamps or 0 to 20 milliamps, then this instrument could drop off or something could be wrong with that instrument. I'd get zero, I'd show 0 milliamps or somebody could break the line. I'd get 0 milliamps here and I would have no idea that I wasn't connected to my instrument. I would just think I was reading zero. Okay, so doing 4 milliamps, I at least know that I've got some current going through here and I know that, that it's working. And um, <clears throat> the other thing is, is uh, let's see here, how this, this thing works is that actually in the, in the computer or, or over on this side, it, it just depends on how these things are, are working, there's a little computer chip in here that looks like this kind of on the inside and uh, the or the chip is driving it knows based on what it's reading here the chip is driving the appropriate number of milliamps through this signal so even though the the resistance of this wire is going to vary depending on the length of the wire because there's a smart device inside the system that's monitoring the current and driving the current to what it needs to be I don't need to worry about the resistance of this line um, I can make the lines longer or shorter within a, within a reason. There's going to be a maximum length of the line that you can do. But uh, because there's a smart little chip in here that's driving this, it's going to handle the compensation for it. So inside this, we've got our 4 to 20 milliamp transmitter. Okay, so this could be, this 4 to 20 milliamp transmitter could be something. It could be measuring voltage or it could be measuring current or it could be measuring temperature or pressure or whatever. Um, the line, the wire, okay, looks like a little resistor, 
and then on the input side you can see I've got my analog input so this is what's going into my A to D, A to D converter on my computer card okay so at this point I'm actually reading a voltage you know analog to digital converters you pretty much always put a voltage in there and I I'm just reading the voltage here so now I've I have a, a voltage going into my going into my analog to digital converter card that is proportional to the output of this transmitter but I'm not just using a volt I'm not just reading the voltage directly I'm going through this current loop setup uh, which is more and more immune to noise and also can compensate for the the resistance in the line for me um, and then again it also gives me the advantage that I can tell when there's nothing hooked up to it so that's a current loop um, and that's how a current loop works for um, inputting signals into a computer card.